you could and definitely should start at any and every age. There's not even a question about it. I was just talking to someone now on Instagram who was telling me that their dream used to be music and they don't know what it is anymore, but it kind of still is music. And I'm like, well, what do you, they think they missed the boat or something. Yeah. Leonard Cohen didn't even make it till he was 40 years old, yeah. you know? Um, and it's uh, really, again, it's if your goal is to be liked or be famous or by the multitudes or something, so you're already dealing with something else. But if, you're, if your goal is to do it, then it, who cares how old you are? Uh, what, your song could be too old to, to learn Spotify. Come on. You can go figure out the algorithms. Go, go learn how to do these things. Learn how to put some stuff out. Learn how to make a good sound. You don't have to, you don't have to be an incredible music video dancer or whatever, you know, there's just so many things. Michael Jackson definitely set the bar very high though, I must say. <sighs> you know, it depends what you're going for. So, right. So let's say songwriting. Sometimes the most incredible song will come down and will just be a big light and inspiration to the whole entire world. And it took zero practice and sometimes even zero talent. So that's an exception to both of those, both practice and talent. Then you might be, you might experience sometimes where someone has incredible talent and there's no, no practice. You also might experience someone who doesn't have much talent. They practice so much and people are like, wow, you are so talented. And in the back of their minds are like, you have no clue how much I practice. And obviously the greatest combination is the both of them. No, 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 definitely not true. <laughs> um, that that's, I, I was once told that you're probably going to be a music producer one day and he's going to play all the instruments. Like I play all, all the, I don't play all the instruments. I play a lot of instruments and some of my friends play many more instruments and they're not pretty, there, there's everything. That book that I mentioned, Ethics of the, of the Fathers, Per Cabot. So in there, they go through, oh, some of the, some of the short, short quotations say, they always quote something in it for examples, the, the yes and the yes, the yes and the no, the no and the yes and the no and the no. And you'll always have four examples that you'll have. So for us, let's bring it down to what we're talking about. You'll have a producer who plays all the instruments. You'll have a producer who plays no instruments. You'll have someone who's not a producer who plays all the instruments. And someone who's not a producer who plays no instruments. Uh, definitely not true. We've seen, we've seen all, all examples. We've seen plenty of successful indie artists. And we see plenty of people trying to get out of their major label record contracts. And we see people who are still trying to get major labor record contracts. It's been very, very helpful to have a big machine behind you. Um, but the last thing you want is to be signed onto a contract that you can't get out of. And I just was uh, at a performance the other day and I met this incredible French singer and she was telling me that um, she waited five years to get out of her contract with Universal just so she could continue with her life because she was literally just stuck and couldn't do anything. So there's those stories. And then on the, on the, you know, you don't want to be the paper on the bottom of someone's desk. On the other hand, uh, if you're the paper on top of that person's desk, it's another, it's another story. So music is something that I can only do alone. You know, that's obviously you see music happening, not alone. And you see music happening alone also. Again, for example, you'll have both, you know, the Beatles are incredible. I think what, one of the things that made the Beatles so incredible to quote Ronnie Vance on this, Ronnie Vance is one of my biggest uh, protective uncles. He's not literally my blood uncle, but he's just, you know, he's the first person to ever get me a, a recording in some sort of studio. He helped me record Sensitive for the first time. And so, yes, there's this myth question of alone versus together. And there's something something simple there and beautiful, but there's also something deeper here about making room for others, you know? I think different people get stuck in different places and I think it's important to flow. So um, you could, if you never leave your room, but you're the greatest musician in the world. So then if, you're, if your definition of success is playing, so then you're successful because you're playing the whole entire time that you're in your room. But if your definition of success is being acknowledged by others and you just leave your room and to play in front of others. If your definition of success is inspiring others, you need to go inspire others. Um, and then there's a lot of people get stuck in, it's all about who you know. And that's a problem to get stuck there. I was just, I heard that from, from I was just talking about that with Danny Kaufman, who was staying at David Weiss's place where I was staying when I met you. Um, and he was just talking about how some people do get stuck in, it's not about what you know, but who you know. That's, that's I think that's a myth because that's sometimes true, but not completely because 
you could know the most great people if you haven't created some, you know, some sort of great product or I hate to call it a product because it sounds so commercial, but you know what I'm saying? If you haven't worked on your craft, so, so then it doesn't matter who you know. So it really needs to be balanced.